for us tonight. Scary, Dustin. Chris, it was just about this time two nights ago, a woman was coming to her home here on Manatee Road. That's when sheriff deputies say this police impersonator approached her and took her for quite a joyride. In this busy neighborhood, deputies say a police impersonator is on the prowl and he threatened to kill a 23-year-old woman. Oh my God. In this area, that's, that's, that's surprising to me. She was standing outside of her apartment on Manatee Drive when he approached her. The woman was just returning home from work. The woman tells police a man approached her with a badge saying she was a suspect in a robbery then forces her into a car. Then the two drive around for more than an hour. Finally, the man lets the woman out of the car after threatening her life when she calls the police. We're not sure what the motive is, and we're investigating that. Deputies say because they don't know why the fake cop took the woman on a joyride, you should be on the lookout. The man is described by deputies as white with sandy blonde hair between 25 and 30 years old, standing about 5 feet 8 inches tall. He was driving an older model white car with tinted windows. That's pretty scary, huh? The people who regularly ride bikes around this area say they still can't believe it happened here. It's always been so uneventful as far as, that, as, as, far as crime goes. Again, the sheriff's office says it's really important to note that this man did threaten the woman's life. So if you've seen him or if you know what happened here, it's important to call the Collier County Sheriff's Office. That number is 793-9300. We are live tonight in East Naples. I'm Dustin Chase, Wink News Now. It was a hug 15 months in the making. I'm just glad he's home. I'm just, it's amazing. He made it. Naples native Michael Gonzalez returned home today after more than a year serving in Iraq. The Army technician was greeted by his sister, nephew, and brother-in-law at the airport, but they weren't the only ones anxious for him to return. I usually end up surprising my mom, but she wanted this one to where she knew I was coming, so we'll see what's in store. What was in store was a huge party. I want everybody to be happy. I want him to be happy to know oh, we're all here supporting him. It's nice to see the family and just do regular stuff. An appreciation they all share after experiencing a great loss last year. His best friend was the one that recruited him, Brandon, and when Brandon died, you know, I didn't want to go through that. His former Lately High classmate, Brandon Gordon, was killed in Afghanistan. I didn't want them in the army. But after that, I felt my good about what my son was doing, where he's been, and that he's alive. It's an experience that I, I wouldn't want anybody to go through. It's just always nice to come back and have the family there to support me every time I come back. Yeah, that's major liability for identity theft there. What may look like only garbage upon closer examination could mean a nightmare for many. I'd be very upset if that was... I'd be extremely, extremely upset. As soon as we walked around this Costco, we found several sensitive documents in this pile of trash. Sensitive like applications for employment, including social security numbers. And there were receipts worth more than $30,000 with the credit card number printed right here. Office Max on airport pulling is plastered all over nearly every document. Could you just answer a couple Quick question. So we went to the store, searching for who left hundreds of identities exposed and why. Can you explain to us what out of the office? Okay. Can you can you explain to us what happened here? How people's social security numbers and credit you. card numbers were exposed today? Out of the store, no comment. With that, we left. Zero six six. And after trying to get comment from Office Max headquarters several times, the best Hello answer there. we got is they will investigate. Oops. We tried contacting several of the hundreds whose information was carelessly tossed behind a business with no success. Customers of Office Max say they'll think twice before shopping here again. With full credit card numbers? Take a look. Oh my God. And by the time we got back from Office Max, this empty parking lot is all we could find. So where the information, identities of hundreds of people went, we cannot confirm. The Maryland shootout means millions to Southwest Florida's economy. But forget about the people coming to see the PGA superstars. The real stimulus comes from guys in the parking lot. We roll in these offices, the two trailers you see here. We have that. We have furniture, food for the crew. NBC Sports spends a week setting up for their weekend television coverage, filling 600 room nights at local hotels, renting about 75 cars, and tons of production gear, too. It means tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars spent by engineers, photographers, 
and plenty of other workers that you never even knew existed. Golf cart people, the power people, the scaffolding people, the spotters and scorers. So we add up to about 125. Even more important to Southwest Florida than the money NBC spends while it's here are what its crews are doing while they're here behind these closed doors. Hey, Chris. Replay. And tight shot like the ball. Yeah. Welcome back. Now here's a look at two of them. This is the event of the year where we get network television coverage. If we try to buy that much airtime on the network, we'd have to spend over $3.6 million. That's 80% more than the Convention and Visitors Bureau spends in an entire year on advertising. You want to go back live to it? Go back live to it. Even better, call your county supplies NBC with helicopter video they can use going to and from commercial breaks. When people see people enjoying the golf course, it plants a seed in their mind. I'd love to go stay at that resort and play on Greg Norman's golf course and look at that great beach. It's the only kind of seed growing up north these days. One Southwest Floridian's hope grows into big things down here sometime next year. In Naples, Noah Pransky, NBC2. This AC unit could be your child's ticket to getting high. The valve comes right off. Inside, all the Freon you can huff. You cannot always know what your kids are doing. Mona Casey's 15-year-old son Charles died huffing the refrigerant two years ago. Very easy access to something that was very dangerous that should have been kept out of reach of children a long time ago. So Casey began her crusade to change it. This week, her efforts paid off. The International Code Council, governing all the state's building codes, approved Casey's request to tighten the rules on AC units. Starting in 2010 in Florida, all new AC units will have to come with this special valve cap. And it can only be taken off with this special tool. The move makes it nearly impossible for kids to get into. It's a major accomplishment. Major. Collier County's building director has never heard of an average citizen able to change the nation's building code. I'm shocked. I'm very surprised and, and I'm very happy that she was able to do what she did. He thinks it's going to save lives. Too late for this mother, but now she knows her son is helping others. In Naples, Anna Manuel, NBC2. Okay, Bob, how do you want to do this? From one day to the next, reporters never really know what they're getting into. What would I need a parachute for? <laughs> and Friday, it was a refurbished T-6 Texan from World War II. It was the aircraft in which all the pilots learned their advanced flying, such as air-to-air -air combat, dive bombing, and how to land on aircraft carriers. Photojournalist Bob Frank and I were about to experience that firsthand, but not before a lot of pre-flight preps and jokes they use 3,000 times a year. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of flop out on that side. That is the missed the tail of the airplane. Go underneath the tail. That's going to deploy your parachute. And we'll come looking for you because we're going to want our parachute back. The people who buckled us in belong to nonprofit group History Flights. When you're coming back in for the landing, you will not have to do a thing. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> You'll put it there. The flight you can buy is custom, as much aerobatics as you can handle, and it must have looked like I wanted the works. There's an air sickness bag here, <laughs> not been used for a long time, you'd be the first one. What you pay depends on how much time you want in the air. The ride we got was worth about $200. Your face always got white uh -huh. We uh, use it for searching for MIAs from World War II, people missing in action. And this program seems to work. In the last 10 years, remains of more than 30 soldiers were recovered. It's quite an emotional experience, especially for the families involved to have their father or grandfather brought home. Many of the people who go with history flights are vets or their fathers were. And most, just like I did, wonder where their flight lands on the excitement scale. Uh, you'd be sitting at about a 7. Felt like about an 11. Near Marco <laughs> Island, Dustin Chase, Wink News Now. That was something. That was something.